So recently we've been familiarizing ourselves with the config struct. I want to expand on this idea. The best way to show what we're going to do here is to first expand on our inventory system. In order to do this, I am going to create an inventory slot. And we can think of the inventory slot as an insert into the inventory. So the inventory will contain everything related to the inventory, including an array of inventory slots. To do this in our inventory, let's add an array called slots. Now this is not going to be a configurable parameter, so we are not going to allow it to be modified through the config. It is simply just going to be an empty array. In our inventory slot, let's go ahead and create a private region. And let's start by storing a reference to our inventory. Now, I do not have to specify that undefined is our default value here. Since we are using the struct accessor to access inventory from the config, if it doesn't exist, this will return undefined. So essentially what I'm saying here is, if this is undefined, then set it to undefined. That can be a little bit redundant, and so I wouldn't blame you for cutting it off and just leaving it simply like this. However, I like to spell this out so that it's very clear what our default value is, even if it is undefined in this case. So inside the inventory, I'm going to create a new method. I'm going to call new slot. Here we will create an instance of our inventory slot. And I will push it into the array. I will also return the slot instance. Okay, let's add a public section to our inventory slot. Create a method called render. To keep this simple, our render is simply just going to draw a rectangle given the width and height of our inventory slot. We know that we're going to need a few things though in order to make this work. So let's add a few more members to our private section. Let's add a X position. Let's add a Y position. Let's add a width. And a height. So I hope this makes sense. We have an inventory slot that is going to do the rendering of that slot insert into our inventory. Because of that, we need to keep track of its X, Y position and its width and height. So inside of our render method, now we can say draw a rectangle. And here I will say X, Y, X plus width, Y plus height. Great. Let's go ahead and collapse this. The rendering is not so important. It's just to demonstrate some of the encapsulated logic that we might want to abstract into this inventory slot class. The big thing to notice here is our width and height. All of these are defaulted to values that we probably don't want. And since we created a method in our inventory called new slot, it makes sense that we would have our inventory be the one setting the properties of the slot insert. So we know that our inventory slot is defined to already take in a config struct of its own. So I could do things like width is 20 and height is 20. So now when I create a new inventory slot through the inventory system, I define the width and height, push it into the array, and then return it back to the user. However, the problem is, is that every single time I want to create an inventory slot, I have to inject the configuration struct properties into this method itself. So realistically, it would actually kind of make sense to be able to pass the config struct in to this method itself. Config and Instead of defining these properties here, I would just pass the config struct through. So now when I go ahead and implement this, I would say inventory is new inventory. And from our inventory, I would say new slot. Now I could pass in dimensions here, say the width and heights. So this is really awesome. This is a great feature that we can start to implement throughout. It makes sense that we may want to configure the inventory slot from outside of the inventory, but we also want the inventory system itself to help manage the storage and positioning and assignment of that slot. Now this is great in and of itself, but I want to expand and add just one extra little detail here. If I open up the inventory system, go to new slot and add the config here. Now let's say I don't want to define the width and height from outside the inventory slot. It's nice to have the ability to pass in configurable parameters into the slot through the inventory system, but I don't want to have to define these parameters. Again, we want to define some sort of optional values that will be defaulted if not entered. So if I remove these entries, 
and I default this back to a standard implementation. I want to be able to add the support to pass in a config struct here, but I shouldn't need it. And it makes sense that an inventory system might standardize the dimensions of the slots stored in it. So how can we do this? A simple solution is to utilize the knowledge operator once again to define our default values. Here I'm going to say config of width is 20. I'm going to do the same with height. And I can say config width. So now in this case, if width is not defined, we know that we will default it to 20. And if height is not defined, then we will default it to whatever our width is. So if I define the width through the config struct and don't define the height, then height will just take after the width. So these are optional parameters. The other thing I can do here is also define required parameters. And in this case, I would do exactly the same thing but I would do a strict assignment. Rather than using the knowledge operator, I would do a strict assignment. So here we have two implementations of width and height assigning those values to the config struct as it's passed through this method. But one of these is going to enforce that they be assigned to our defaulted values. And one of them is going to allow them to be passed in as optionals. In this case, I would prefer to keep them as optionals. However, there are times when you may need to use both of them at the same time, depending on what members you are trying to configure. Some members of a config struct may be optional, but some of them them, you might want to assign as enforced. A perfect example of this is the inventory itself. Here, inside the inventory slot, I have the option to define the association between the slot and the parent inventory. So this is something that I would probably want to enforce. Since the inventory system itself is creating the slot, it would make sense to enforce this association and this relationship through a required parameter. Up here, I can say required parameters, and I would say config of inventory is self. So here, even if I decide to try to pass in an inventory reference outside of it, in this case, let's just pretend I want to assign the inventory to a player controller. Even if I try to do something like this, I will pass it in through the method and we will override it. So maybe required is not the right word here. Maybe override parameters or, well, I've used this word already. So maybe enforced parameters might be the proper way to think of this. These are parameters that are enforced into the config struct. And these are parameters that are optional. So once again, if I don't pass in the struct at all, then this should be able to function without problem. And to do that, let's go ahead and make sure that this is optional up top here. So hopefully this makes sense. The main thing that I wanted to point out in this video was that once we have defined the config struct as an integral part of our class structure, we can start to pass the config struct in as parameters through various different methods. And then we can start to operate on that config struct parameter in very specific ways. And in this case, we can define optional and enforce parameters. I think this is the last major aspect of the config struct that I want to cover for a little bit. I might come back to it in future videos, but I'm hoping that with the past few videos, you should have a comprehensive understanding of how to implement your own configuration struct into classes. I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. This is an extremely powerful concept to grasp. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.